Good morning, Madison, Wisconsin. Beautiful day in the upper Midwest. If we lived 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, you might see someone wandering into your town that looked maybe something like me. And he would have been a very welcome person because back then you didn't have any television. You couldn't read, you couldn't write, and maybe the only way you would get any kind of information would be from someone wandering around called a bard. And he might do something like, It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three. By thy long gray beard and glittering eye, now wherefore stops thou me? The bridegroom's doors are open wide, and I am next of kin. The guests are set, the feast are met. Mayst hear the merry din? He holds him with his skinny hand. There was a ship, quoth he. Hold off, unhand me, gray beard loom. If soon's his hand dropped he. He holds him with his glittering eye. The wedding guest stood still and listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. Of course, that poem was not written 500 years ago. It was written about 1820 by Coleridge. Um, but if we did that poem, we'd all have long gray beards, so I'm not going to do that one. I'll do something else for you. But I'll do it of another British seaman who had a bit of, uh, a bit of bad luck. Uh, and the only thing I think uh, interesting about this poem is the towns of Deal and Ramsgate on the uh, southeast corner of England. Other than that, and sit back, relax, and enjoy. Twas on the shore that round our coast from Deal to Ramgate span that I found alone on a piece of stone an elderly naval man. His hair was weedy, his beard was long, and weedy and long was he, and I heard this white on a shore recite in a singular minor key, Oh, I am a cook and a captain bold, and the mate and the Nancy brig, and a bosom tight, and a midship might, and the crew with a captain's gig. Then he shook his fist and he tore his hair till I really felt afraid, for I couldn't help thinking the man had been drinking, and so I simply said, Oh, elderly man, it's little I know of duties of men in the sea. And I'll eat my hand if I understand how you can possibly be at once a cook and a captain bold and the mate of the Nancy brig and a bosom tight and a midship might and the crew of the captain's gig. And he gave a hitch to his trousers, which is a trick all seamen learn and having got rid of the thumping quid, he spun this painful yarn. Was in the good ship Nancy Bell that we sailed to the Indian Sea, and there on a reef we came to grief, which has often occurred to me. And pretty nigh all of the crew was drowned. There were 77 of so, and only 10 of the Nancy's men answered here to the muster roll. There was me and the cook and the captain bold and the mate of the Nancy brig and a bosom tight and a midship mite and the crew with a captain's gig. For a month we'd neither victuals nor drink till a hungry we did feel, so we drawed a lot and accordingly shot the captain for our meal. The next lot fell to the Nancy's mate in a delicate dish he made. Then our appetite with the midship might, we seven survivors stayed. And then we murdered the bosom tight and he much resembled pig. Then we whittled free did the cook and me on the crew with a captain's gig. Then only the cook and me was left in the delicate question which of us goes to the kettle arose and we argued it out as sitch for I loved that cook as a brother I did. And the cook, he worshiped me. But we both be blowed if we'd either be stowed in the other chap's hole, you see. I'll be eat if you dines off me, says Tom. Yes, that, says I, you'll be. I'm boiled if I die, my friend, quoth I. And exactly so, says he. Says he, dear James, to murder me were a foolish thing to do, for don't you see that you can't cook me? Well, I can and will cook you. Then he boiled the water and took the salt and pepper and portions true and some chopped shallot, which he never forgot, and sage and parsley too. Come here, he says, with a proper pride, which his smiling features tell. Twill soothing be if I let you see how exceedingly nice you'll smell. Then he stood it round and round and round and sniffed at the foaming froth when I ups with his heels and smothers his squeals in the scum of the boiling broth. And I eat that cook in a week or less, and as I eating be the last of his chops, why I almost drops, for a vessel in sight I see. And I never laugh, and I never smile, and I never lark or play, but I sit and croak with a single joke I have, which is to say, Oh, I am a cook and a captain bold and the mate of the Nancy Brig 
and a bosom tight, and a midship might, and the crew were the captain's gig. Sir William Schwenkt Gilbert, ladies and gentlemen.